Question 5, part A. Figure 3 shows part of a periodic table. So we have uh, elements that are some elements that are found in the periodic table in several groups. Uh, so part, three, part Roman number 1. Select from the table the most reactive. Uh, so the most reactive is uh, CS. So we say it is CS. Uh, you can also call it Ciasium. Cesium, or you can call it Caesium. And we will do. Uh, so, this is the most uh, reactive metal, uh, which is in group 1. Uh, it has the highest radius in that group. So, that is the most uh, reactive metal in group 1. Uh, part, part 2, non-metal. Nanometal is uh, the most reactive is fluorine. The most reactive is uh, fluorine. So you can say fluorine or you can say fluorine. Uh, fluorine. Uh, and this is, we say, that this is the most reactive nanometal, which is in group 7. This is group 7. Uh, that is the topmost it high it has the highest uh, affinity uh, electron af affinity uh, then uh, we have roman number two select an element with the highest fast ionization energy uh, so the element here is uh, helium uh, helium uh, which we can say we can we can say helium and this I say one with highest ionization energy in group uh, that is in group eight uh, that is the most stable in group eight uh, that means it is the hardest to lose an electron so that's how you answer that uh, you get two marks let's go to the next part uh, part three we are told uh, part one Name the method used to obtain argon from its source. So argon is obtained by fractional distillation of liquidified air. So you say fractional distillation uh, fractional distillation fractional distillation of liquidified air so that is uh, uh, the method that is used to obtain argon uh, part two give one industrial use of argon so one is uh, used in uh, bulbs uh, used in bulbs or fluorescent uh, another use is uh, used in welding uh, another area is a uh, high-speed printing high-speed printing uh, the other one is preservation of wines. Preservation of uh, wines. Uh, the other one is uh, uh, dilution of oxygen. Uh, we have uh, dilution. In uh, respiration aid, uh, it is also used in forensic forensic science. Forensic science. Forensic. Uh, so we have uh, filling uh, double glass windows uh, and uh, 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 so filling uh, double 
grass windows are also used in uh, radioactivity radioactivity dating so mention any of uh, of the of this you will be able to get one mark uh, part uh, part four explain each of the following observation uh, the melting point of lithium is higher than that of potassium so we can say the reason is uh, lithium has stronger metallic bonds compared to potassium so you say lithium lithium this is because lithium has has stronger metallic a stronger metallic bond a stronger metallic bonds compared to potassium uh, so you get one mark Part 2. The melting point of chlorine is lower than that of iodine. So to explain this, you say chlorine has weaker van der Waals or intermolecular forces than iodine. So you say chlorine, chlorine has weaker van der Waals. or intermolecular forces than iodine uh, let's call it uh, inter uh, forces than iodine Iodine. Uh, since it has smaller molecules, uh, since it has smaller molecules. So that's how you answer that. Uh, let's go to the next part. Part 5. The following ions have the same number of electrons, that is nitrogen, magnesium, uh, oxygen, and sodium. Arrange them in order of increasing ionic size. Give reason for the order and you get two marks. So if we start with the smallest, uh, the first one is uh, magnesium is a uh, uh, smallest uh, we then followed by sodium uh, followed by oxygen and followed by nitrogen that is uh, nitrogen uh, so smallest to the largest uh, so the reason the number of protons uh, then the reason why we are starting with this, the magnesium is the smallest while nitrogen is the largest is that the the number of protons the number of protons the number of protons uh, or you can say nuclear nuclear change uh, charge uh, decreases in order of in order of uh, magnesium uh, that is sodium uh, oxygen and finally nitrogen uh, 
hence uh, particle size increases hence uh, particle size increases so that's how you answer that let's go to part b question number five part b use table four to answer questions that follows uh, so we have table four uh, we have properties so that column showing properties uh, we have substances h i j and k so we are given the melting point of h i j k the boiling point that is given degrees uh, electrical conductivities at room temperature uh, we are told that uh, h does not conduct uh, i conduct uh, does not conduct j conduct and then k does not conduct electric electrical conductivity in molten state so this uh, conduct does not conduct conduct and does not conduct uh, so identify the substance which is a gas at room temperature uh, so if you look at uh, our substances we have uh, the melting point uh, you can see uh, J and K melt at negative 85 uh, eight, negative 38.9 uh, negative 85 uh, degrees centigrade the boiling point the boiling point of uh, of C of H is seen of 95 183 357 the boiling point of uh, K is negative 60 degrees centigrade so we can say K is a gas because uh, it, its boiling point is negative uh, negative uh, 60 degrees uh, centigrade and the room temperature is 25 so you can see it boils at a very low temperature so we can say its boiling point is below root is is below room temperature which is room temperature is 25 degrees centigrade so that is why we identify k as a gas let's go to part two part b uh, roman number two Name the particles responsible for electrical conductivity. Uh, so electricity is conducted uh, through uh, uh, movement of electrons. So if we look at uh, the conductivity, uh, electrical conductivity at room temperature, we can see that H does not conduct, uh, I conduct, uh, J does not conduct, J conduct, and uh, K does not conduct. Uh, but we in uh, in uh, electrical con conductivity in molten state we can see that h conducts so uh, i does not conduct j conduct and uh, k does not conduct so we can say h has uh, h has mob of a mobile or free of free electrons this one because uh, it is able to it does not conduct at room temperature but conduct at molten uh, uh, in molten state uh, this uh, that, so it means that uh, it has mobile or free electrons uh, J we can say uh, we, if you look at J J conducts in uh, uh, electrical activi uh, conductivity at room temperature and also in molten state. So this must be a metal, and a metal we can say has uh, has uh, delocalized electrons. Uh, delocalized electrons uh, reason being it is uh, able to electrons it is able to conduct at uh, room temperature 
and also in molten state. So that's why we are saying has delocalized electrodes. Let's go to part three. Roman number three, identify the types of forces that hold the particles together in H uh, and K. So if you look at H, uh, we can see that uh, in terms of uh, conductivity, it does conduct in, uh, uh, at room temperature and also uh, does not conduct at room temperature but conduct at, uh, uh, in molten state. So you can say H uh, has uh, ionic, or H is ionic. We can also, or it is, it, is, it has uh, forces which we call electrovalent bond, electrovalent, electrovalent bond. Or we can say these are uh, electrostatic forces, uh, electrostatics. Uh, forces. Uh, the other one is K. Uh, looking at K uh, does not conduct either at room temperature or uh, in molten state. So we can say K uh, has intermolecular forces. Inter intermolecular forces uh, since uh, does not uh, conduct in either state uh, has very low melting point so we say it has uh, intermolecular uh, forces or what we call van der, van der Waals And that is how you answer that question.